Uh, we had a press conference the other day on e-ticketing and uh, quite a lot of progress has been made. As you know that we had also identified a number of issues that had emanated after the uh, commencement of the compulsory e-ticketing that commenced on the 1st of October, uh, which was on Sunday. Uh, since then, of course, we have uh, seen an enormous uptake of e-ticketing, of course. Uh, people do need to uh, take the buses and are using e-ticketing. Uh, the number of complaints we've just uh, received uh, yesterday uh, were 20, as opposed to the 100 or so that we received on the first day. So we can see that the system obviously is working, as we've said, that this is part of the growing pains. And uh, But we are here to address and make sure that all the issues that have been raised do get addressed. There has been some issues about, uh, you know, about people wanting to lodge complaints. We found out that uh, some people had lodged complaints about some of the drivers were being discourteous uh, and you know, were rude about it. And there's one particular complaint we had received the other day that uh, was actually highlighted to us by uh, CFL, that the bus driver actually refused to give the ticket, even though they paid for it, correct fare, but they refused to give the ticket. Uh, so obviously the passenger, traveling passenger is entitled to uh, a ticket. So a new toll-free number has actually been set up, 151, uh, which can be accessed from all numbers, whether it's Vodafone, whether it's Digicel. Uh, it's toll free, it's available 24-7 and uh, you can actually lodge any complaints you may have. We encourage members of the public to please lodge any issues, any complaints you may have on this toll free number uh, because we want to obviously ensure that all the problems are actually addressed. We uh, also have a mechanism as you know that some uh, passengers have been, not many, but one or two have actually been overcharged uh, for the fare, so how do we get uh, uh, redress for that. Uh, Vodafone has uh, now very kindly agreed that all of the Vodafone outlets, the moment you actually get uh, overcharged, you can go to a Vodafone outlet and get the money that has the amount of money that's been overcharged, it'll get reimbursed by Vodaca Vodafone by topping up your card. And then, of course, Vodafone will have the back end arrangement with the respective bus companies to sort that out. But so again, we have you know a solution to a problem that had uh, emanated. So, the moment you feel or you believe you've been overcharged, you have your ticket. Please go to any Vodafone outlet, and they'll remedy the situation for you. Uh, we've of course had uh, 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 other complaints about some people saying that the uh, bus drivers uh, do not necessarily understand the way the system works. Vodafone uh, this weekend, this Sunday, is organizing again another set of training sessions in Lotoka, Singatoka, Suva and Lambasa where the, as you know, most buses don't run on a Sunday so we have the opportunity to get as many bus drivers as possible in these locations from those areas and again Vodafone will take them through the various training and again if they do not, uh, if they have some misapprehensions or do not uh, know exactly how to use the machines they will be taught again further. Uh, we've also had, uh, of course, uh, on the flip side, of course, uh, we've had a uh, uh, number of issues that have been raised with us where some parents, unfortunately, are using the children's student cards to get on buses. Uh, so uh, that is most unfortunate. Uh, the idea is that government obviously, um, you know, subsidizes a, a number of students who come from low-income families. Uh, we have also other student cards, as you know, the yellow card is the non-subsidized card and the blue card is the subsidized card and we have actually some parents who are actually using the student cards to, you know, uh, get on as adults. So we we'll, urge them to please stop it. We've also now spoken to the Bus Operators Association and uh, Vodafone and asked the bus drivers obviously to be able to say to these traveling public that you are not a student, uh, you are actually an adult and you cannot use those cards. Uh, we've of, of course, there has been uh, some you know, talk about uh, um, the uh, consultations. As you know, that we've been having consultations on this for the past three years. Uh, in fact, more than that. Uh, and the law was drafted many, uh, some time back, a couple of years ago. And then when the law did actually commence, we gave a two months lead time. So people were given two months prior notice to say e-ticketing will now become compulsory the law is already in force, will become compulsory from the 1st of October. So obviously there's been a lot, a lot of lead time. I saw in one of the dailies today where somebody's saying there's been no consultations. Obviously lots of consultations have been 
have been held too. Vodafone again has also uh, uh, decided to, you know, in order to encourage people to uh, use e-ticketing and see the value of e-ticketing, um, from uh, next week they'll be giving the specific details on a daily basis. Uh, 50 uh, travelers each week uh, will be entitled to a $50 a prize. Uh, they'll be drawn, of course, uh, in, in terms of uh, randomly selecting uh, these people. And uh, so every week you have uh, $50 given to 50 travels, travelers throughout Fiji will be using uh, e-ticketing. At the end of it, by Christmas, just before Christmas, all those people who have actually uh, been in the draw and actually win the prize will also be uh, eligible to a much bigger prize, which uh, Vodafone will, of course, uh, announce uh, next week a much bigger draw and the prize uh, to the value of about seventy thousand uh, dollars. We've also uh, had discussions uh, and the Vodafone and uh, the Bus Operators Association is that again next week we'll have uh, further details announced to see where people can actually nominate who they believe is a good and courteous driver. So those drivers will also be publicly acknowledged and they'll also be given prices, prizes sorry, uh, from next week and Vodafone will announce that as to how that will work. Uh, we currently, of course, need to ensure that uh, if I uh, get on the bus and then somebody is actually a driver is very good, his, his service is efficient and is courteous, etc., I should be able to know who he is or who she is and be able to nominate that person. So once that is worked out, Vodafone, of course, will be able to, uh, you know, uh, announce the competition to ensure that we have the, uh, the, the, the bus drivers actually identified and being rewarded for the services that they are, that they are providing. Uh, we've of course had uh, some, uh, of course, a uh, couple of uh, bus drivers of course have not uh, picked up students, as you know, there was one complaint uh, and that has been addressed. There was one uh, unidentified or unconfirmed report. I understand Fiji Times uh, ran some story about one student uh, having to walk a distance. The team from this office has tried to get in touch with that Fiji Times journalist uh, to identify exactly who that student was or which bus uh, did not pick him up, but we are yet to be furnished with those details. Is that correct? correct. We've reached out, we've emailed to them, but they have not come back with the details. So, if it is indeed a true story, uh, if Fiji Times has indeed published a true story, we want to know. Because the whole idea, is, as we said to you on Monday, that the media needs to work together with us to be able to give us the information. Because of course, you know, as we said, the complaint levels have significantly dropped, as of Monday, we had a 0.03 percentage complaints out of the 600,000 odd card users. Uh, but we, as we've said, we still want to address all of the problems. And the only way we can do that is factual evidence, if factual um, you know, uh, stories are actually told to us and incidences, then we can address them. So please, if somebody does inform you, we've had a good feedback from CFL where they've actually identified people uh, who have complained to them and we've actually got back to them and tried to solve it. They've told us exactly which bus company uh, did not do X, Y, Z and we're able to remedy the situation. One of the situations, of course, was LTA was able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, pull up the particular bus company. So if Fiji Times has that information, give it to us. Uh, don't just publish a story without actually uh, verifying it. And even, indeed, if you have that information, we've requested it, we urge you to give us that information. Because the point is that we want to fix it up. Uh, the point is that e-ticketing is working. There's obviously a couple of stumbling block issues, as we've seen over the past few days. Those incidences have actually reduced quite significant, significantly. And we've received a number of very positive feedback. So I'd like to, of course, thank uh, you know, uh, Vodafone and uh, the Bus Operators Association. Um, the Bus Operators Association, of course, needs to ensure that its, uh, its members <coughs> do the right thing as provided for by the law, otherwise they, they face the full brunt of the law. But apart from the sort of legal requirements, they also need to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, from a very practical perspective, that they're working well together and need to and send that message out, uh, out to, the, to the members. And as we've said in the wider context that uh, this month also, we have the new interest rates that will now be applicable to the bus companies with a gross turnover of less than $1.5 million a year, where they'll be eligible to if they should they want to borrow money to buy a new bus, the interest maximum interest rate they will pay is five percent. So the idea is to encourage the smaller bus companies to have better quality uh, public transportation, better buses, newer buses, 
makes it a lot more attractive for people to travel and indeed encourage people who do not necessarily take public transportation to actually take public transportation. We are similarly doing that with the e-ticketing. Uh, 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 sorry for... Um, we're looking at um, uh, with uh, minibuses and also taxis so we can actually expand that. Uh, as I highlighted again and I need to highlight this again uh, uh, after Monday uh, is that the the tap on tap off of course becomes a lot more um, uh, practically implementable once we get the GPS positioning uh, for the actual different stages uh, and the locations for that uh, through LTA. The moment that is done we'll be able to get the tap on tap off which will make it even more easier a lot more accessible for people to be able to travel and indeed requires less driver intervention. Uh, at the moment there is some driver intervention in terms of actually you know, putting in the stages you're going to travel to because we don't have that uh, um, uh, fields actually marked out through LTA but the moment they do that then we'll be able to have tap on tap off. The third point again that I'd like to also emphasize <coughs> is that uh, by uh, Monday we'll be announcing the the committee of people that will be reviewing the, the bus fare rates uh, with the view to looking at the reduction and as to how much that uh, re reduces by obviously will be determined by the committee. Uh, we'll expect most definitely um, the CEO of the Fijian Competition and uh, Commerce Commission to be actually a part of that group. We'll of course have a representative from the uh, Fiji Bus Operators Association uh, to be also part of the committee and also uh, somebody from the Consumer Council of Fiji. And once the committee has completed its work, then we can also announce the new uh, bus fares, uh, you know, in, in the new year, uh, at the very least. But I think the point of the matter is that uh, at the moment, it, this is now creating a lot more transparency. A lot of the bus companies don't know exactly how much income they're earning. They also know how many passengers they're getting on board at, each, at which point and where and what point in time of the day. Uh, so it gives very, very good data and also makes travelling a lot more easier. Uh, but we, of course, require everybody's you know, cooperation in this. Uh, please don't abuse it. If you're a parent, please don't use your student's, your child's card to get on the bus uh, as an adult. Uh, also, at the same time, if uh, a bus company has done, not done the right thing or the bus drivers overcharge you, please dial 151, a toll-free number, and you can lodge a complaint there. In respect of getting immediate recourse, you, you can get your uh, the refund uh, for being overcharged through any Vodafone uh, outlet. So, uh, thank you very much. We just wanted to give you an update in respect of what is happening. And as you know, uh, in the next few days' time, of course, we'll get much better results. And of course, we'll be able to tell you next week with the competition that Vodafone is also announcing uh, and also with the, the training that will uh, be carried out this weekend. Thank you. Yes, I sent that email and your team did call me up in the morning, but he said he would email me the specific requirements he wants, the specific details he wants, and he did not do it by the time I left to come here. But I'll tell you now, the student walked from Nambua Primary School, 8-year-old student, um, towards his home in Tadirua, and his uh, mom found him at, uh, at uh, she works in Wailoku, and she found him at near a police post somewhere there. So because the parent does not have a good command of English, she could not tell me the name of the bus company, but I called up the school uh, head teacher and he spoke of the record. He told me that he is not aware of that particular situation, but there have been one or two cases whereby school bus drivers refuse to let students on board because they don't have an e-transport card. Do you know the name of the bus company? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I do not know the name of the bus company because the, 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 the parents did not have... No, no, but you said that the teacher... You said the teacher said that the bus company is not allowing people because they don't have e-ticketing cards. So which, if the teacher knew the bus company did not allow it, then which bus company was it? Um, I did not ask for that one, for, the, for that instance, because I was after my specific case. Of the your, boy who your specific from. case is also which bus company did not do the right thing. Yeah, that's what you should be finding out. And that's what you should be telling us. Yeah, Rather than trying to create a sensational story, simply just to do one half of the story. If you are interested in trying to remedy the situation, then you must find out which bus company did it. This is the point. Find out, please, which bus company did it so that bus company can be pulled up. Because the agreement is, and the law is, that should a student not have a card, should the machine not work, then, or, or should the bus driver do anything untoward, 
the student is allowed to travel on the bus for free. So my point is this, as a responsible journalist, you should be trying to find out which was the bus company, as opposed to just simply reporting the fact and it is unfortunate that has happened. And we apologize to the parent and the parents that the child actually had to walk. But let's try and fix up the problem. The problem is obviously the bus company or the bus driver, whichever it is. So let's get to the root of it. If you, if you have the source, we believe you have a moral and ethical responsibility to find out exactly which bus company did it. So it does not happen again tomorrow. That's the point. I've been trying to get the name of the bus company, but like I said, because the principal did not know the specific case about that HR boy, he was not in a position to tell me which uh, bus he traveled in. You just said to me that you weren't interested in that part of the story, you did the other part of the no, story. Which one no, is it? I have not published, the, for your information, the story has not been published yet. We were waiting for your comments on that. Uh, the, the story, uh, I'm interested in the part where the HR boy had to walk. And like I said, because the parent did not know the name of the bus, and that one, that incident where the boy walked was not reported to the principal. But the principal, from his uh, uh, from his observation, has seen that there have been one or two buses, uh, bus companies, uh, drivers rather, who have refused to let students on board, and then he talked to the drivers to let them board the bus. Okay, so please, what is the name of the bus company? If you are saying now again, you just said to me that the principal saw one or two buses and the bus drivers in those buses not allowing students. So if he's already seen the bus and the bus drivers, surely he would know which bus company it was. So please, if that is your source, as a journalist, that is your source. Please share that information with us. If the principal is your source, you said he spoke to you off the record, go and speak to him off the record and tell us which bus company it is. Because you'll be doing the child a favor. So it does not happen again. Unless, of course, you're not interested in not ha letting that happen, and not again. So this could have been people have been charged with one password. Just the whole that work, we need to take receipts. Their receipt, yeah. You just take your receipt, and you tell the Vodafone outlet that this is what's happened. I've been overcharged. I mean, like we had one case on the first day that a person traveled on uh, stage two. So the driver, instead of putting two, put 22, probably by mistake but obviously deducted a lot higher amount. So he can then take it to Vodafone and say, I've been overcharged. Um, you mentioned that you know, the refunds can be done at Vodafone outlets. I'm assuming, are there any other vendors like in neighborhoods where, which are quite far away from the Vodafone outlets where this same recharge uh, refund can be facilitated? Well, Vodafone is a number of outlets. Yes. We, we are present in all the towns, right. that's one. The other is, we'll, we now have to go back and work with, for example, We've just uh, worked out with Post Fiji. So 64 outlets, all rural centers and all those Post Fiji, is now you can go and top up your card system. So we will work with Post Fiji to see if they're willing to act on our behalf and be able to refund the customer. So as we progress daily, we are hoping to roll more of those where people can get their refunds. And what we've also heard is that a uh, lot more shops, and now as the e-ticketing uh, takes hold, are being encouraged, you know, they want to come on board now because they also get paid a commission uh, for having those cards. Sorry. Um, so for now, those who live in rural areas will have to come to the city and get their investments um, and then... <coughs> well, it depends. I mean, you know, uh, when you say rural areas, there's a Vodafone outlet in Navua. There's a Vodafone outlet in, you know, along... Uh, Talevu. Uh, uh, Korovo, there's a Vodafone outlet. So as, as the CEO did highlight, is that uh, the, the issue of refund is not a big issue because we don't have that many complaints about people being overcharged. We've only had about two on record of people being overcharged. And that's the same two ones that has been regurgitated. Uh, so again, as a media, you need to be responsible about it. Uh, but in the event that uh, it has been overcharged, you can go to any Vodafone outlet, which I, uh, there's quite a few of them, Vodafone and Vodafone outlets, which are Vodafone and outlets, which is also part of the Vodafone uh, distribution network. But as the CEO did highlight, they're also talking to Post Fiji. And Post Fiji you'll find also in rural areas. Well, we've got the toll-free number now, so that's 151. So far, uh, LTA has their own uh, number uh, people can call, and we get people obviously sending text messages, uh, etc. 
but uh, the COLTA um, uh, and together with the complaints that we had received by email messages etc we had said on Monday it was about a hundred complaints they had received you know it ranged from things like uh, buses not running on time obviously buses also did not run on time prior to e-ticketing <laughs> many people they also complain about buses not running on time prior to e-ticketing so it's not something uniquely attached to e-ticketing but uh, there were also other instances where we had some complaints where some bus companies did not apparently pick up passengers even though the bus was not full uh, so those uh, ones also were picked up as complaints as part of the overall you know e-ticketing uh, program uh, so um, again you know like talking to them today they only received about 20 complaints we had uh, one incident where we one bus company apparently the driver uh, said to the passenger don't use your card just give me one dollar or don't use your card just give me the cash so we know where the cash would have gone so that's another incident I mean we had like I mentioned the other day some of you weren't here that some bus drivers have resigned and said we're not going to actually work because you know uh, our income levels will drop because of e-ticketing uh, as we've said to the bus companies they need to look at the salary rates for the bus drivers also and now that uh, the bus drivers don't have the opportunity to actually pocket any cash a lot of people don't realize, you know, if you, I mean, I'm sure that if you talk to somebody like uh, Mr. Ajit Singh, uh, a company like Tati Road Transport, imagine all the buses running and they all get cash. Imagine the whole cost of actually gathering the cash, counting the cash, the leakage from the cash, then, then banking the cash, security. the entire security around it. Uh, of course, now none of that will happen. It automatically goes into account, gets transferred from Vodafone into the accounts. The seamless flow of actually ensuring and knowing exactly how much money is actually coming in through the system. But uh, from a physical perspective also, of course, all those hassles are no longer in place. Uh, so those sorts of issues, of course, have been addressed. Uh, as you know, that we've also made, an, uh, the Minister for Transport also made an amendment to the regulations, uh, where now, the standard of driving must be still the same. Uh, people still have to go through the very rigorous <coughs> test of getting a PSV license, but the, uh, li uh, the age has been reduced from 21 to 18, and also now the requirement to hold, you know, you, uh, now you can go from class 2 to class 5. You don't actually have to go through the other classes, so they can go through that, but the standards, of course, of driving must be met. This, of course, creates new opportunities. I mean, I was just talking to two bus companies yesterday, uh, they are looking at actually increasing the weekly wage of their uh, of their drivers by about $150. Some of them are looking at increasing by $200. So it's also good for the drivers too. So some drivers traditionally, prior to this, were getting paid $200 a week. So a lot of bus companies said, "Okay, we'll pay them $200 because we know they're taking out a third from our takings. So that's okay to pay them $200." But then now, of course, they cannot do that. So these bus companies have said, "Look, instead of paying them $200, we'll pay them $400 a week." salary uh, but you know all the monies are being accounted for so it's also an employment opportunity uh, for those you know people who may be uh, budding uh, PSV um, uh, license holders been concerns raised about the different stages some of uh, people who have swiped their cards have said that from center point to from Suva to center point it's stage two others have said that from Suva to Naboa is stage uh, stage two um, if you could just highlight, based on the routes, the different stages, because a lot of people seem to be confused about this. I can't give you the stage now, of course, I don't remember the stage off the top of my head. But you can get that very easily for... Uh, sorry, which organization are you from? I'm uh, from CFL. So, <coughs> so you can... The for LTA of the... LTA is not here, but uh, you can get that very easily from LTA. If you go to LTA, they'll tell you exactly where the stages are. Uh, but the other, the other issue is this. If you look at, and not many of the media organizations obviously have picked this up also, is that we have said now that the, the bus fares, the maximum fares, so the fare has not changed. Whatever the fare was prior to e-ticketing still remains. But in practice what used to happen, some bus drivers, because they wanted to get more passengers, used to reduce the price of their fare. So instead of charging a dollar forty, they were charging people one dollar because they were competing with each other. So they did do that from a practical perspective. So you get on the bus, I'll get on that bus company, I'm going from Suva to Nasori, I'll pay only one dollar. 
what we have said also now, so the fairs have not changed. But what we have also said now, these fairs that were there in place prior to e-ticketing, they are now the maximum fares. So if tomorrow, Tadiru or Transport decides to reduce its fare by 20% across the board, they can do that. That's their choice. They can't go over that, but they can reduce it. So if he wants to, for example, compete, or there may be five or seven bus companies driving between Suva and Nasori. So one bus company may decide to reduce their fare by 20%. That's their choice. But they can't charge more. Of course, we've had instances where, uh, for example, stage one fare is uh, you are being charged 70 cents. But if you look at the LTA regulations, it actually used to say 68 cents. That was the fare, 68 cents stage, stage one. But of course, with the cash system, you could not pay 68 cents because you don't have one or two cent coins. You paid 70 cents, so it was rounded up to the next, you know, uh, the 10. So now, instead of paying 70 cents, because you're paying a ticket, you're paying 68 cents, so you're saving two cents. We had one complaint, of course, that was lodged on Monday saying, I used to pay $1.10, I'm now paying $1.11. Because obviously, because when you had a cash, you could not pay $1.11, which was the actual fare. You paid $1.10. So now you're actually paying $1.11. There come other instances we had the other day that we highlighted that people are actually paying $0.04 cents less. But the way that the regulations have been done, in particular after the budget, is that the fare that is set by LTA is the maximum fare. Nobody can charge anything more than that. And which is the same fare that was prior to e-ticketing. The fares have not changed. But the bus companies have the latitude to be able to bring it down should they wish to unilaterally. It's their own decision. But what we're doing with this review is overall looking at all the staging, the pricing of staging. Which of course needs to be done, taking into consideration the cost for the bus companies, need to look at you know, the uh, revenue sources need to look at uh, uh, the expectations, etc., and through the you know, Competition Commerce uh, uh, Commission. Yeah, I'm sorry, I've just been reminded that uh, by law the stages need to be displayed on the buses. So that's some of the things that we're getting LTA to do, to make sure the bus companies actually, uh, you know, uh, display the stages of the fare on the bus. So when you get on, you know exactly what the fare should be. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is that there used to be a requirement previously where the bus drivers used to have a badge. It said PSV, the license number. Uh, so one of the things we were just talking about and talking to the LTA is maybe get a photo ID. So they, they actually, you know, if you go overseas you'll see a big card with the driver's photograph and their number and, and their name. So you put it there. So when my shift changes, the next driver comes in, he puts his ID there or her ID there to know exactly who it is. So. When Vodafone has a competition, so you know about who's a good driver. If you go in and you like the services of the driver, you can dial, dial the number and say, I know I like Mr. X uh, of this bus company. Uh, so that's how you can also track which drivers are doing what. So it, 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 all of this actually brings about enormous opportunities in respect of uh, tracking, in respect of being able to give feedback, and able to also empowering members of the traveling public. Uh, they have a lot more control and they're able to provide a lot better feedback. I was just questioning about the, the number of complaints and I'm saying that you know, there's a talk for line complaints will be made to the talk for line as well. But just in relation to these uh, teething issues, as you call it, uh, because of these teething issues, have there been any discussions between LTA, Vodafone and uh, the bus operators on maybe giving people an option to pay cash and card until at least all the teething issues are sorted out? You've had that option for the past two months. <coughs> That's the problem. A lot of the people, the, a lot of the buses, Tadiru Transport has been fitted with e-ticketing machines for a very long time. Three years, four years now. Four years now, but you know, I mean, even if you take the two months, a lot of the passengers have been paying that. You see, you, you can't, I mean, these are teething issues that are not, you know, insurmountable. They're solvable. You're not going to roll back something just because there's one or two problems. We need to be able to forge ahead with it. The moment you say tomorrow that we're going to have cash and also e-ticketing card, People who have been paying cash since the 1950s, what do you think they'll do? Will they make the switch? So I think that's a, I mean, this question was put to us by your organization just a few days ago. And we said this matter has been addressed so many times. We've been addressing these issues for the past three, four years. How can you have accountability if you're going to half of the people pay cash and the other half will pay uh, e e through e-ticketing? 
the reality of the matter is that these are very minor issues in comparison to the percentage of the people who are using the cards, the complaints are quite minimal. There's some of those issues that your colleague obviously highlighted, so to sensationalize, obviously will be there. We need to address it. But you need to give us the information. Just a question on the e-ticketing machines. Are they able to reset after every transaction? Say, for instance, a passenger gets on and is traveling to stage three, and the next passenger gets on, traveling to stage one, however, gets charged stage three fare. Now, the way it operates is each time you tell the driver as to where it's traveling, the driver will press this page. So it automatically resets. There is no question of Have, have you used it? So you, uh, the, no yeah. So no, what I'm saying, initially the driver intervention, yeah. so it, it resets. So after the sale is completed on one card, then the next person comes on. You obviously verbally tell them and say, "I want to go to this state." Then it pins it in, and then you actually swipe your card. Yeah. Is Uber okay. running out of insurance for cards? No. Plenty where it came from. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Naka. The number of complaints, and I'm assuming that there's a talk for line complaints will be made to the talk for line as well. But just with relation to these uh, teething issues, as you call it, uh, because of these teething issues, have there been any discussions between LTA, Vodafone, and uh, the bus operators on maybe giving people an option to pay cash and card until at least all the teething issues are sorted out? We've had that option for the past two months. <coughs> That's the problem. A lot of the people, the, a lot of the buses, Tadri Road Transfer is being fitted with e-ticketing machines for a very long time. Three years, four years now. Four years now, but you know, I mean, even if you take the two months, a lot of the passengers have been paying that. You see, you, you can't, I mean, these are teething issues that are not, you know, insurmountable. They're solvable. You're not going to roll back something just because there's one or two problems. We need to be able to forge ahead with it. The moment you say tomorrow that we're going to have cash and also e-ticketing card, people who have been paying cash since the 1950s, what do you think they'll do? Will they make the switch? So I think that's a, I mean, this question was put to us by your organization just a few days ago. And we said this matter has been addressed so many times. We've been addressing these issues for the past three, four years. How can you have accountability if you're going to half of the people pay cash and the other half will pay uh, e e through e-ticketing? The reality of the matter is that these are very minor issues in comparison to the percentage of the people who are using the cards. The complaints are quite minimal. There's some of those issues that your colleague obviously highlighted, so to sensationalize, obviously will be there. We need to address it. But you need to give us the information. Just a question on the e-ticketing machines. Are they able to reset after every transaction? Say, for instance, a passenger gets on and is traveling to stage three, and the next passenger gets on, traveling to stage one, however, gets charged stage three fare. Now, the way it operates is, each time you tell the driver as to where you're traveling, the driver will press this page. So it automatically resets. There is no question. Have, have you used it? So you, uh, the, no yeah. So no, what I'm saying, initially you have the driver intervention. Yeah. So it, it resets. So after the sale is completed on one card, then the next person comes on. You obviously verbally tell them and say, "I want to go to this stage." Then it pins it in, and then you actually swipe your card. Is running out of insurance cards? No. Plenty where it came from.